But they're, so Sterling are very much about looking at how people are coming and applying for citizenship, taking them through the process, making sure it's a very smooth process, and then making sure that after that, you can get the passport, renew the passport, and have access to over 140 countries by using that particular passport. So a company and corporation as well, the citizenship application. Um, I've actually, I think, stayed at a hotel just here. Great hotel, lovely place to go. So if you want to go through the process and actually visit, you can. But it is not necessary to go in order to get citizenship. So you don't physically have to go at all. This is all done online. And the point is getting the application in place and then making sure you don't have to visit afterwards either. So it's very much a question of making the application, taking the advantage of having that application and the passport as well. So, why St. Lucia? Why is it different to all the others you've listened to all afternoon? Well, certainly the location. I would always say the location is fantastic. But also the point of view that there is tax relief and in fact there is no tax on corporate enterprise going on there either. Certainly uh, the, the figures which are put in place mean that any family can apply and includes children up to the age of 25. And it says in, inclusion of dependent parents and no physical residency requirement either. You don't actually have to invest in a property or anything like that. You don't have to physically be there. So that's another great advantage to the whole thing. There are a number of projects and special funds in which will allow you to take advantage of the citizenship by investment as well. So minimums are actually shown here. The application of loans 100,000 with a spouse, which includes an additional two children, is $165,000. So when you're comparing it to other types of jurisdictions, it's a very reasonable jurisdiction. It's cost efficient as an institute, as a program itself. And very easy then to look at small additions in order to add new dependents there as well. So the criteria to apply are very, very simple there. There are real estate projects. If you wanted to make an investment in real estate in that particular region as well, the application would be $300,000. So roughly twice the price of a family of four coming into it. So there are ways to do it just by having a, an investment and paying the money for a family to be uh, made available with the passports, whatever there, but also do an investment in a particular project. And there are major projects running at the moment which will enable you to have that advantage there as well. So the high-end brand hotels, there are many of them in St. Lucia, very famous hotels, and also some of the investments themselves and escrow accounts, etc. And my advice would be to talk to Jan, who's over here, to get the more detailed information about the projects themselves. So some of the enterprise projects, there's some bigger projects, and obviously you see speciality things, cruise ports and marinas. The island, the airport is in the south of the island, the main town, Castries, is towards the top of the island, and it's in that region, Rodney Bay, for example, where there are major hotels, international hotels, and opportunities for investment as well. But there are different criteria, and some of the criteria here are sole applicants, it says an investment of $3.5 million. So yes, there are possibilities of taking advantage of those particular projects in those areas which we have, for example, pharmaceuticals, the ports, the bridges, the infrastructure of the island. And in fact, the government is very keen to support people who want to make investment into these big infrastructure projects. So again, offshore universities, and we ourselves, from the bank perspective, are looking at offshore universities and investment in that region. Government bonds. The government's very keen, obviously, to get money into the whole economy. And there's also a new COVID bond, which has been announced with a price of $250,000, which is for a period between five and seven years. Non-interest bearing, and what will happen is it's guaranteed by the government uh, so no interest paid at the end of it, the government will make use of that 250 and at the end of that period you can redeem that for exactly the same price. So it's an instrument that the government can use in order to make an investment there. That's the Covid bond. But say there are other bonds uh, available there and the minimum application there is 250 for the Covid bond but other bonds are available as well. 
Jan is the person to talk to. Just a little bit about the bank and what we do supporting the investors coming into the country. Because it's all very well and good. You say, yes, I want to invest in a new economy and I want to go there and I may have to take residence there, but I want to continue work whilst I'm there. How do I have the right services around me to support the work I'm doing? Especially if I'm an entrepreneur, I want to continue with trade, I want to make sure that I have banking facilities and expertise to help me through that. So what we do, we're supervised, regulated and authorised by the Financial Services Regulatory Authority of St Lucia. So we are an authorised bank, Class A licence, and we can issue financial instruments to help trade. Office in, uh, rep office in London, where I am based, Jan is based directly in St Lucia, in, in Castries, just north of Rodney Bay. And we have 750 agents and partners around the world to assist in 90 countries able to do instruments and issuance to help with trade overall, import and export. So, is this going to play? No. It's a wonderful video that's supposed to start now. No, I'm not doing its thing. Okay, come to our stand, I'll show you the video. It's really remarkable. It's really great. Hands showing growth, and wonderful things that we do, issuance of instruments. Uh, not quite working in this environment, never mind. The point about international trade and how we're helping entrepreneurs wherever they are around the world, regardless of their investment, is that it's a very complex process. It could take all of these players in order to make sure that containers full of goods come from one country to another. And here we're supporting them throughout the ecosystem, throughout the ecosystem, exporters banks, insurance companies, customs, advising banks, insurance, etc. There are so many parts to the whole transaction. If you're involved in a payment transaction, it's three pieces of information. If you're involved in a trade transaction, import and export, it could be hundreds of pieces of non-standard information. And that's why we're specialized in providing these instruments worldwide. There are multiple regulations. We talked about it a little bit this morning in, on the panel session. We know that regulation is changing somewhere in the world every between 7 and 12 minutes. A new piece of legislation affecting any one of the over 200 countries where we can potentially move goods and services. We monitor all of this in a real-time basis. The cost of this is astonishing. Cost of compliance, dual goods checks, sanctions checks, KYC, due diligence, PEPs, so politically exposed people. We need to know who is trading when they're trading, how they're trading, are they going to be alive at the end of the transaction, which can sometimes be recurring, not only a 90 day or a 360 day, but recurring up to five years time. And in these days of COVID, will the company exist? Will your contact exist, unfortunately? So we, we look at these multiple taxonomies, multiple customs, multiple regulation, multiple standards, so we have to monitor all these things and we take very great pride in ensuring that we do this correctly. What do we do as a bank? We issue instruments based on the following list. Let's the credit between a buyer and seller. Bank guarantees to ensure that we take the risk if there's any problem between the buyer and seller transactions to the point with the bank of last resort effectively. Pre-advising, so standard comfort letters, RWA, regularly enable to tell your counterparty that that buyer is ready to do the business. We also have merchant accounts, and if you, have, you want to be a resident, or non-resident, but a passport holder in another jurisdiction, we can also offer bank accounts, which seems to be the stopping point for a lot of people taking up residency and citizenship of other jurisdictions. So we can certainly do that. Correspondent banking, money remittance services, we're also a participant in Ripple, so a cryptocurrency, we use the network and two services, the ex-current service for foreign exchange and ODL, on-demand liquidity, if you wanted to move from one non-fiat currency to another fiat currency without moving into dollars, which is the currency trade. So these are the sort of instruments and the rates that we charge. We charge a fee of $6,000 to open a bank account. And yes, we go through a very 
very tenuous, not tenuous, but a very extended uh, number of checks in order to understand the identity of the shareholders, the owners, so the ultimate beneficiaries, the balance sheet and everything for that particular client to onboard them as a new uh, customer to us. Minimum $5,000, there's also heavy due diligence. The important thing here is that we have what we believe are cost-effective rates. We do know that in some jurisdictions, banks are charging 110% of the face value of a trade for the length of the trade. So if you are a small co corporate for the first time wanting to issue an instrument or buy from abroad and you need a bank to help you, it could be the case that your cash flow is completely stopped, restricted, and makes it impossible for you to be competitive in international markets. Our business model is such that we use appropriate collateral at a reasonable rate without demanding these very, very high rates of, of funds being held in escrow accounts. So, for a wise investment choice, your man is sitting here, come and see us regarding how that could possibly work. If you're looking at banking, and you have people who said, yes, I'd love to be in St. Lucia, I, I would love a passport to do that, but I still need to do work whilst I'm there, because everybody needs to earn a living, then certainly from the banking perspective, we're here to, here to help with opening the bank account and then assisting that business in the long term. And that, my friends, is that. I thought it'd be quick because it's towards the end of the day. And if you have any questions, we'd be delighted to take them. Yes, sir? How much you have, as a collector, how much you are charging the margin for the C or the margin, How do you mean? Margin for the letter of credit and guarantee bank credit. How much are we how charging? How much margin, margin you are charging? The margin? Yeah. Or the amount? Because we have per instrument margin is the... Margin is as a collector. As a collector. We don't charge for the collateral. We have one fee for each instrument. That is only commission? Yeah. No margin. Do you no. margin? For a per instrument, if you do a 90 day letter of credit at site, 3.5% for that instrument. That is only the commission. That's it. No That's our fee. It's a deal collateral. Well, the collateral that we have is that we are the uh, consignee for the goods right until the end of the transaction. From a risk perspective, we own the goods. Yes. So well, that means that we have a much lower rate that the customer can pay in order to secure that transaction. And if something goes wrong and there's a shortfall, we are credit insured which means that we sell the goods at the open market or back to the buyer to the seller. Yes. That's a must. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Stunned silence is normal after that. <laughs> I say the business model is slightly different and I don't think there is, is in fact no other bank represented here who perhaps have that local understanding, that global understanding, specifically on trade, but also opening up the bank accounts as well, specifically in difficult jurisdictions. And we have to go through a very, very large and very long compliance process. It's not a five minute process by any means. So the bar has been raised very high by our regulator to ensure that we follow international standards, all sanctions environments, making sure that nobody's on a specific list, making sure that they're not on, they don't have hold 15 passports, for example. They've got to be resident in a certain place for the account to be opened, but do not have to be resident in St. Lucia to open that account. You don't have any representative office here? No. We have people here, agents and partners, but no representative office yet. Any other questions? Did I do my 10 minutes? Yeah. Should we let the next one on? <laughs> okay, I'll let it come up for the next one. <laughs> Thank you for your appreciative time and uh, wish you all a good conference and, and obviously stay safe. Thank you. Thank you.